Hey guys, what's going on? It's Lefty from 643 Productions coming at you here with a Modern Warfare 3 Domination gameplay commentary. Here I am on the map Overwatch using the MP5 submachine gun at the fall camo. I have yet to get it gold, but this is a bit of a real talk. This is a, this is a commentary outside of our the normal lexicon that I like to confine this channel to. This is going to be involving something that honestly has nothing to do with Call of Duty and nothing to do with video games. Although uh, it could be if the if the roles were reversed, uh, and maybe I'll get into that later. But if the roles of uh, George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin, Trayvon Martin, excuse me, were reversed, uh, I could very easily see this or see this scenario or this instance uh, as used as a a, a battering ram uh, to make inroads into uh, into the video game world. If uh, if George Zimmerman was actually the 17 year old uh, child or uh, or aggressor in this case, and he had been known to play video games, I could very easily see that uh, that connection being made and, and things like that to happen, because you got to save the children from evil video games uh, instead of actually having parents, you know, may maybe parent their children instead of just, I don't know, but whatever, that's just me, and we're getting way off topic. But yes, I am going to be talking about George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin. Now, you've all had a chance to know and to learn who these people are and what the story is surrounding those two names. Again, George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin down in Sanford, Florida. So I'm not going to waste time rehashing the story and explaining what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, if you have no idea what those names mean, go ahead and Google them. Look it up. Uh, I, I encourage you, though, when you are researching, if you don't know the whole story or you feel that you don't know the whole story and you want to know a lot more, read a few different sources and keep your minds open. Because as sad as it is to say uh, there are news outlets out there, <laughs> like uh, Fox News, <laughs> I, I was going to try to cough cover that but uh, i decided you know that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't be fair fox news is trying to turn this into a partisan issue fox news is trying to turn this into a right versus left issue which no surprise there uh but it's really really it i saw that the first time i saw it i had to click away from the story i was reading on fox uh because i was just getting i i was raged i was enraged honestly uh that these that these pencil necks would try to turn an issue like this into partisan politics, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And uh, you know, I think the 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 editors over there should all have their dicks chopped off, uh, and the, and the females tits lopped off with a machete, and they should all be made to suffer uh, for a long, long time until they beg for death, and uh, and then are mercifully mercifully uh, put out of their misery for doing for doing that kind of thing. And not just because you know, not not just with the Trayvon Martin thing, but the the political politicizing of, uh, of different issues that have nothing to do with politics it is just, it's infuriating and, uh, and unacceptable from major news outlets, especially ones that purport themselves to be fair and balanced. But again, I'm being partisan about it because they're being partisan about it, which isn't a good justification for my, uh, partisan hackness, but <laughs> I apologize, but I encourage you, if you don't know who Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman are and you don't know about this story, go look it up. But I will say now, uh, and I think this is, I will just give you guys the, the important, the, the key news, the key features of this story. If you want to know everything, you want to know all the subtle ins and outs, go research it, go look it up, and uh, and go spend some time reading different sources too. But suffice it to say, uh, George Zimmerman killed Trayvon Martin, an unarmed 17-year-old boy, after he says Trayvon Martin attacked him, George Zimmerman, and was beating him uh, mercilessly and slamming his head into the sidewalk, punching him in and breaking his nose. And as a result, Zimmerman, who was armed under the uh, Florida's concealed carry laws, meaning it was legal for him to be carrying a firearm uh, in a concealed manner at that time on his person, he then shot Trayvon Martin in self-defense, 
killing the 17-year-old boy. Now, a lot of people initially came out and said, oh my God, how dare he? He was, it was a 17-year-old kid and he had a gun and he's, you know, he's over 200 pounds, well over 200 pounds. You know, how could this happen? And, and, and the reason George Zimmerman wasn't charged is because Florida has a stand your ground law. Most states think that a moral actor has a duty to retreat from aggression before they defend themselves, especially when they, before they defend themselves with you using lethal force. So most states say, or a lot of states do say, you have a duty as a moral actor to retreat before you can defend yourself and be protected by the law. I'm, it, it, most states, I'm not saying that all states or most states say you cannot defend yourself in the absolute. They say you can, but you have a moral duty, a moral obligation to try yourself to remove the threat and the instigator from the situation before you actually start defending yourself. However, Florida is not one of those states, and I believe the state I reside in, which is Illinois, is one as well. They say, no, you don't have to. We are going to write it into law that you do not have to retreat. If somebody, if you are in fear for your life, you can defend yourself using lethal force if necessary, which we are not here to talk about the legality and, uh, and the, the necessity of stand your ground laws. I kind of like it. I kind I do like it. When, but when you couple it, obviously, with concealed carry laws uh, like they do in Florida, sometimes you run into trouble. But I do understand the, 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 the at least the idea uh, behind stand your ground laws. And so I understand that to a certain respect. Now, the reason that George Zimmerman was not arrested for murder, or, or at least investigated for murder at that point when he shot Trayvon Martin, is because the police on scene could not, they could not prove, or they could not, they did not have sufficient evidence to counter George Zimmerman's claims that he was protecting himself, that he was he was the defender and Trayvon Martin was the aggressor and he, he had to defend himself using lethal force. Now, that is very interesting because the police, the Sanford Police Department, which has been surrounded by scandal in the past and has been involved with cover-ups in the past of people that have been connected to the government in one way or another that have committed crimes and then just somehow got away Way with it uh sanford the sanford pd has done that in the past but they have come out and said they said well look we wanted to charge him but we didn't have enough evidence that he was that that you know counter contradicted his claim of self-defense and and you know the the stand your ground law and so they said we couldn't charge him and so he had to go away and and now of course uh we learned that george zimmerman's father uh is actually sits on the supreme court in the state of virginia which <laughs> i mean come on that's weird huh i mean that doesn't oh Oh, dear. Uh, but, however, but, I'm saying but, however, but, yes, uh, uh, there was surveillance footage of George Zimmerman taken the night of the shooting of Trayvon Martin. The night after, he was taken into custody by police and questioned. And there was surveillance footage that was obtained by ABC News, and I'll throw a link down in the description below if you're interested and you want to go check it out. Surveillance footage obtained by ABC News shows George Zimmerman being led out of a, of a police cruiser after shooting Trayvon Martin and showing no signs, no bruising, no cuts, no stitches, no blood on his clothes or person otherwise after being supposedly beaten so severely by Trayvon Martin that he had to pull out his firearm and discharge around into the 17-year-old boy in self-defense. No marks, no scratches, no bruises, no stitches, no dried blood, no leftover blood, no nothing on George Zimmerman in that footage taken the night after he shot Trayvon Martin. And that is very, very, very interesting and pokes a real big hole into the story of the Stanford Police Department. And I think, it again, it is very, very interesting and sheds and just cracks this, this case uh, and this scenario wide open. And, uh, and I think uh, there, it needs to be discussed and it needs to be proliferated uh, that this is the case and this is what happened so that more people can discuss it. And hopefully more people can come to, to, come to what I think is the right conclusion. Now, if you guys want me to talk more about this and you guys want me to get into the nitty-gritty and the guts of what's going on and let, me, and let you guys know what I actually think, be sure to drop... Uh, 
drop some love on this video. Give it a like, a rating, comment. Let me know what you guys think. Favorite it if you guys want. Uh, and I will come on back with another video in which I discuss this more in depth. But there you have it. Surveillance footage of George Zimmerman. Link in the description. Go check it out. It's really interesting. Thank you guys for joining. I hope you enjoyed. I am out.